It's very interesting because as, as a maker, I think you do have a lot of confidence in what you're doing and you trust your materials and your process. But in the making of a piece, there's always that time when you just think, what am I doing? Is this really going to work? Um, the, the idea of the sculpture was really to create a talking point to link people back to the building and how it's been made and what it's been made with so that it sits and rests uh, comfortably within this beautiful landscape. Well, the brief was to make a piece of work which um, amplified the straw bale build for the new Country Park Visitor Centre. It wasn't specified whether it was um, temporary or permanent, um, inside or outside, so I had a lot of freedom to interpret this brief. Um, and uh, really, honestly, due to, due to time constraints and, and funding, uh, I opted for an indoor piece um, that is as permanent as the materials will allow. Um, however, it's a very, very delicate um, piece. It's quite ephemeral, um, but it has a kind of a inherent hidden strength to it, the way it's been um, bound together, held together. I've used a technique called twining um, and also a Maori technique um, which uh, just twists um, fibres together to hold individual strands of straw um, together. So it, it was incredibly difficult, delicate work to do to make the sculpture. I, I realised that I needed a technique to help me construct much bigger pieces so that they would have integrity and basically not fall apart. The material always holds itself together. You don't need extra bits and pieces and components to attach to it. It's just the material itself. If you, if you learn the technique, will hold itself um, with a lot of strength. Um, so yeah, using these techniques, I wanted to, to use those and I wanted to use the actual material that was used in the building. Uh, and the form that I'd used for that was based on a, a, a Japanese rain cape, which is, um, if, it, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's basically like a, a cape made out of straw. Um, and Japanese farmers used to, to basically wear these in the fields to protect them from the rain. And they would also have huge kind of trousers and, and tunics made of straw. Uh, and what's quite remarkable is that if rain falls and hits the straw shaft, it, it just runs down the outside of it. And so they actually were pretty waterproof. I was also interested in, in a kind of a, a sunbur sunburst image, which was sort of the reverse of the, the rain cape having the, the sunburst shape, because I felt that the rain cape is really about protection. And, and what really strikes me about the building and the straw build is that it's really solid. The walls are really thick. They're entire bales of, of, of straw. They're not shaped, they're not reduced. They are just normal bales of straw. So you have that solidity, that warmth, that kind of hugging protection of the building in what is quite a, a bleak landscape. We all know how windy and wet it gets up here in the winter. It's beautiful now, but it's, it can be pretty harsh up here. So the idea of, of, of protection um, and, and looking around the, the landscape and the wildlife here, I was really struck by, you know, the birds and um, birds of prey and kestrels. And uh, I was really sort of interested in the wing structure and how um, feathers are obviously similar to straw in that they have this inherent quality. They're, they're actually constructed on the wing in a really fantastic aerodynamic way to, to give lift to the bird. Um, and I believe kestrels have this sort of unique hovering ability um, that, that, that they can do, which it, it just all seemed to make sense to me to sort of carry on this uh, and develop this idea. So again, I quite like this juxtaposition of this really strong natural material with this quite delicate thin straw. Um, and, and it was quite a challenge to actually, actually build the piece. Um, but I do like working with exploring different things and relationships and, and transformation. And I think, I think what I managed to achieve was to turn something that people know and familiar with into 
something hopefully quite unexpected. <laughs> yes, the idea um, initially in my proposal was to, um, for it to be suspended so it wouldn't be within um, reach of, of, of the public. Um, and that may well still happen um, as the new build is being completed. Um, there's a couple of options for citing the sculpture inside the building. Um, but yes, I, something that interests me as an artist is, is the temporary nature of work and things being quite sketchy and unfinished. And um, I think that that does fly in the face a bit of public art, but at the same time, it's quite difficult to have and to make something that does last forever. And I question why that's necessary. Um, everything has a life cycle. We're in a place where we're surrounded by an ecosystem that's constantly changing. And I just think, well, when its life is over, it's time for something else to be there. It's someone else's shout to, to amplify another aspect of life to do with the building. But having said that, inside, it should last for a good long time. I, I, have, I put a lot of faith in the material itself. I think people are drawn to natural materials uh, quite simply. There's something about the sort of tacit quality you have with a natural material. There's, I mean, there's literally the science behind it. There's great opportunities for education. Um, I know that the visitor centre is developing an education programme to go along with the opening. So in terms of working with um, children and, and all age groups, really, they'll be looking to develop workshops and we'll be able to hopefully work together, showing people techniques and getting them to handle the materials themselves so they begin to appreciate some of that touchy, feely, tacit um, nature of the environment. I don't like making work that's too literal, but it has to have sort of resonances and, and um, it has to infer and imply uh, and suggest to people to for connections that they understand that are relevant to their lives. And um, I think, you know, people understand protection from rain, <laughs> you know, people understand birds and flight and, and can latch on to those things as, as sort of concrete thought processes that then help them, it gives them a way into the piece and a way into understanding the connections with the piece and the building and the landscape as well. Just stepping out from your doorstep and, and going somewhere a little bit different, um, especially after the lockdown, is, is really important because, you, you know, your mind becomes sort of flattened and limited by only doing the same things all the time. So I think that the Country Park offers um, the whole population around here the opportunity to, to just wander and engage with an environment that is a, a whole different world to them, a whole different universe, if you like. Hopefully, people will just remember their moments when they have come out and, and enjoyed the park and, and, and keep doing that and keep using it and uh, appreciating it's just this stunning environment where you get such height over the sea. I mean, I live in Becks Hill, very close to the sea, and I look out at the sea at the same level. But to be high over it, that sense of elevation, um, it's incredibly good for your mental health. That, that position, the context up here, it's hilly, it's challenging underfoot because it's, you know, it's, it's knobbly and bubbly to walk on and um, it's not a pavement, it's not a flat promenade, it's, it's engaging your whole body, your whole physicality and um, as a maker that's really important to me to be physically involved in, in, um, in everything but especially translating that into making work and um, so it's, it's always about being hands-on for me. Mm. That's great. <laughs> yeah, having seen it again now, I've kind of fallen back in love with it. So it's really nice to have handled it and smelt it and um, yeah, to, uh, to have seen it again. And then seeing it actually when it's put in, in the, the place where it's supposed to be, that will be fantastic because just relationship and context of pieces of work for me are really important and they just sort of sing together 
in the right space. I mean, with these things, there is an element of possibility of, of repair, which again is, is, you kind of shy away from it thinking, oh, I don't want to have to sort of deal with it and go back into it. But, you know, repair and rebuild is again, part of the cycle of life. So I was sort of um, a little bit prepared for that, but also prepare for a little breakage in its journey. The uh, strips underneath are um, not cut yet because obviously it's not been sighted. So we have to develop a, a hanging method for the sculpture. And um, these, these are uh, very thick bits of centre cane, um, which just giving it a little bit of structure underneath. I'll just lift it up. You can see the uh, a bit like bones really, or the boning maybe on her skirt. So it does seem to sort of have an element of um, clothing to it as well, doesn't it? As a as a piece, it, you know, it's it's got that sort of sense of a, a peacock tail of of display, of kind of shouting, "Here I am! Aren't I marvelous?" Um, Again, a bit like kind of sun rays, just it in laying straw down next to itself. I mean, you can see here, I've got um, a couple of, of layers, you know, just starting with one bit of straw and then another bit. It's, it's moving the whole time. It's difficult to keep still. And, and as it grows, it, it becomes stronger and a bit more stable. Uh, but then it kind of gets to a point where it becomes much less stable. <laughs> it has this sense of movement, which is really nice and that it is flexible. Um, and I'd, I'd really love to see it maybe hanging in a, a sort of a, um, a wing sort of arc over people's heads. Um, but if we can't manage that, if it doesn't fit the, uh, the what, what else is going to be in the visitor centre, I think it'll be mounted on the wall. So you, you get the kind of the full display of the piece so I, I sort of wrestled with the idea of um, taking the the heads off or leaving them on um, and and these are the things that really I, I guess are the most fragile because as they t well they are already dry but as they're moved around they could disintegrate and fall off um, but uh, but a sculpture without them would would be equally good it's it, it just become a different piece so I've had this hanging, um, I first started making it um, in my bedroom because it's the biggest space I have at home. My workshop's only eight by eight mi uh, uh, feet, so um, couldn't have possibly made it in there. Um, and uh, I, had to, I had to literally take over my bed and make it on my, my double bed. Yeah, I mean, if we, if we hang it, it won't be this way up. It will be the good side down. <laughs> Obviously, I'm holding it by the, um, the, the structure, the support structure at the moment. Um, it does naturally curve this way, but I'm hoping that we can um, construct a frame um, using hazel, which is actually another um, material that's being used in the building because in the straw bales, they, they put hazel rods into the walls for um, attaching other things to. So if you're going to drill into the wall, you, you basically insert a, a rod of hazel and then drill into that rather than just drilling into the um, straw. So, and they, and they sort of use hazel to pin the, the bales together as well. So um, it, it would be a kind of a perfect, a perfect combination as far as I'm concerned to make a, a sort of a series of hazel hoops and perhaps to, um, to be able to have that and then seeing it actually when it's put in, in the, the place where it's supposed to be, that will be fantastic because just relationship and context of pieces of work for me are really important and they just sort of sing together in the right space. So um, roughs made like this, but with fire at the edges. Yeah, I'm really excited about seeing it and, and hopefully seeing people's reactions to it and um, I think it I think it is dramatic. I think it'll be a talking piece. It's lovely with the windows in, isn't it? Oh, it's great, isn't it? Lovely. And what they've done is they've left a panel of the uh, straw visible over here so you can see the bales. Nicely compressed.
tight as tight can be. And that's going to have a sheet of glass over it, isn't it, so that people can see it. It's going to be a frame. So it's, um, the idea is that it'll be probably oak, possibly Douglas fir, because everything else is Douglas fir. And um, we're going to have a sheet of glass uh, and an opening door. And the idea is that people that come of all sizes uh, can come and touch the straw. But, the, but they'll be closed it so that it's not handled all the time. So yeah, so the, this is all obviously coming along nicely now. It's been, um, it's been painted, plaster painted. We're just about to put the skirting on the bottom. And lovely picture window at the end, which we're going to put a big frame around. Mm -hmm. And a massive big piece of, we think, sweet chestnut. And that's the thing that you can really develop once the space is here. And it's, it's the sort of living evolution, isn't it, of how to use the space best to, to bring the outside in and, you know, the, out, the inside out as well. So the, the main entrance is here. And there was uh, a possibility that it might hang suspended at some point so that when you come in, you, you see it from... Uh, from there, there's a cafe area going to be over here and, um, and then sort of open space workshop area down the other side. So if it's not suspended there, um, it may be wall mounted somewhere, but that, that's a, a big discussion that we need to have in terms of use of the building and how it's mounted and whether it's covered or not. So I think my, my preferred option is suspension somewhere, somehow. I think from a sort of building control point of view, we, we wouldn't, I don't think we'll have any problems. They're LED downlighters, so there's no risk. There's no warmth, there's no... There's no heat, there's no risk of fire, or anything like that from it. I, I was sort of thinking, yes, of course, because I just like to expand to fill the entire space. Of course, know? of course. Um, but because I, I think as a wing, it needs to be actually hung asymmetrically. Yeah. Um, it just needs to sort of have a, a fall on it, an arc, which, you know, may just be, be a sort of a bit of a divide between this space and that space. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's going to be here, actually. 